coming up on Network Africa. Thousands of protesters in Sudan remain on the streets in the capital, Khartoum, ignoring a curfew declared by the military. South Sudan expresses worry that the coup in Sudan could unsettle its own peace plan. And suspected Islamist militants kidnapped two Cuban doctors in Kenya. Hello and a warm welcome to the program. I'm Tenyola Shubawale. We begin today in Sudan where the military is seeking to reassure the people that their only concern is public order. A spokesman for the army says Sudan's future will be decided by the protesters who took to the streets to demand President Omar al-Bashir's removal. But protesters remain camped out on the streets of Khartoum, fearing the coup leaders are too close to Mr. Bashir. The mood is celebratory outside Sudan's defense ministry in Khartoum after President Omar al-Bashir, whose autocratic rule lasted three decades, was overthrown in a military coup on Thursday. <laughs> Despite the clear jubilation of these protesters, they have a further key demand, that military leaders hand over power to civilians. According to the demonstrators, they will not accept an administration led by military and security figures or by Bashir's aides. 75-year-old Al Bashir had faced 16 weeks of demonstrations against his rule. The country's defense minister says Sudan will enter a period of military rule to be followed by presidential elections. Sudan's ruling military council also says it expects the transition period to be two years at most, but possibly as short as one month. Overnight, demonstrators defied a nighttime curfew, continuing their demands that military leaders hand over power. <laughs> World powers, including the United States and Britain, say they support a peaceful and democratic transition sooner than two years. In the meantime, thousands are still camping out outside the defense ministry and are calling for mass prayers. They have vowed to continue their protest until a civilian government is in place. Let's get more on this story now from the VOA's Naba Mohidin, who joins us from Khartoum. And Naba, what is the latest on the resignation of President Omar al-Bashir? People yesterday were very angry and frustrated reacting to the announcement. Uh, they were chanting against the, the military rule, two years of a military rule, which is against what they want. People kept protesting and extended the sit-in till they obtained what they demand. They demand a civil democratic government to fulfill Sudanese ambitions of a peaceful, good life. The current cabinet army, they used to be very loyal to al-Bashir, Awad ibn Auf, and Kamal Abdel Maruf. Awad ibn Auf himself is under U.S. economic sanctions, as many as other Islamists in the army. So I think they, they are just a, a shield to protect Islamists in the army, to try to produce themselves again, the Islamic movement to produce itself again. Unless we have a civil transitional government. How are neighboring countries like South Sudan and Egypt reacting to this crisis? South Sudan is the country suffered the most from al-Bashir Islamic regime and policies. In cabinet level, there is conflict of interest as Bashir regime recently played a role in peace talks and agreements in South Sudan. This conflict of interest might affect the South Sudanese government's reaction to events in the following days. But nationwide, South Sudanese people are celebrating with their brothers and participating in the sit-in in a very lovely atmosphere, raising hopes of a united Sudan again after 30 years of brutal autocratic 
role. Egypt officially has been ignoring what's happening in Sudan since December 19 and in 2013 too. The two countries have very tense relations for years as they have conflict over the borders and political issues. And as Abdel Fattah Hassisi military regime is shocking democratic atmosphere in Egypt, any victory of public revolution in a neighboring country like Sudan, it may influence Egyptians to revolt against military. VOA's Nabam Mahidin, thank you for joining us on Network Africa and giving us an update. Meanwhile, the Sudanese military says it will not extradite Omar al-Bashir on war crime charges. Mr. Bashir is the subject of two international arrest warrants issued by the International Criminal Court, which accuses him of organizing war crimes and crimes against humanity in Sudan's Darfur region between 2003 and 2000. And eight. However, he may be put on trial inside Sudan, according to the military council set up after the coup.